So there have only been a few papers that have researched the effects of OM chanting, which is an iconic part of yoga practice, and one was recently published by Inbaraj in April 2022. This specific paper looked at the impact of OM chanting on heart rate variability in people who practice regularly, yoga in general, not specifically OM, versus people who haven't practiced yoga. Now, heart rate variability, right, I've talked about it in other videos, so I'm not going to really get into it here in any level of depth, but it is a measure of autonomic flexibility to move between the parasympathetic and sympathetic system, and higher heart rate variability tends to be more greatly influenced by increased parasympathetic activation. And when we measure heart rate variability appropriately, not just on the Apple Watches, right, those are cool, but when we really do it appropriately, we put electrodes around the chest, and we pick up different kinds of frequencies. And one of the frequencies that we pick up is high frequency, and that is coming off of the vagus nerve and indicates increased activation of the parasympathetic system. And when levels of high frequency waves increase, we generally see that there is a greater amount of heart rate variability, right? So that's being inferred. So what they found is that in the long-term yoga practitioners, there was higher resting heart rate variability, meaning that they were giving off more of these high frequency waves at rest than people who had not practiced. The waves that we find coming off of the sympathetic system are either low frequency or very low frequency. They also found that the long-term yoga practitioners had fewer low frequency waves at rest. When engaging in the OM chanting for five minutes, both the regular yoga practitioners and those naive to yoga actually had an increase in heart rate variability, again, inferred by this increase in high frequency waves coming off of the vagus. But the augmentation of that high frequency in the regular practitioners was much greater. So they went to this real heightened increase in parasympathetic activity, whereas the other group had it, but not as grand. This highlights the value of doing yoga regularly and how it can affect the autonomic nervous system, lending our capacity to rest, enter parasympathetic states more easily. Just to note, research does show that doing a higher frequency of practice weekly is better than doing like once a week over many years. Another component of this study that they just wanted to express is that they made sure that when people were inhaling and then exhaling the ohm, that they were keeping it at six breaths per minute with a longer exhalation. So that means each breath cycle was 12. So let's say they inhaled for four and then ohmed out for a count of eight. And they suggested that one of the values of ohm chanting, therefore, might not just be the effect of the vibration and vibration affects the vagus nerve, right? It affects it in the throat, in the lungs, and potentially, we think, also the branch of the vagus in the middle ear, but that elongating the exhalation may be part of the value of ohm chanting. And we know unequivocally that the elongation of exhalation evokes greater vagal output to the heart and increases that high frequency wave. So, if you're thinking, I'd really like to teach OM chanting to people who I feel might be resistant to it, maybe just talk about the fact that it elongates the exhalation and it vibrates different parts of the parasympathetic system evoking this kind of shift towards relaxation. Or maybe you want to talk about its philosophical origins and it being the original sound of the universe, which touches into other people's beliefs. Either way you write it, Ohm chanting seems to be something really beneficial. And before I end, I just wanted to thank my mom for knitting this gorgeous scarf. Can you believe she did this? Mom, thank you. You're awesome. You should chant Ohm. Namaste.